in the book of Romans, uh, chapter 12, from verse 1 to 2, we see Paul saying, Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, because this is your true and proper worship, and do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, and you will be able to test and approve what God, uh, God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. All right. Now, as followers of Christ, we are not to be conformed to this world's pattern. And in Romans 12 verse 2, Paul has, has a don't follow by a do. The negative command is not to conform to the pattern of this world. And as the J.B. Phillips Bible translates, it says, Don't let the world around you squeeze you into his own mold, which is what the Greek term for conform, which of course is, um, is, uh, is uh, explained as schematizo <laughs> okay meaning to form according to a pattern of mold all right so the same term is found in only one other place in the new testament which is first uh, peter 1 14 which says as obedient children do not be conformed to the former lusts which were yours in your ignorance so what exactly do paul and peter mean by telling christians not to conform to the world the Christian and the world are not to be like-shaped. We are not supposed to look the same. That is, we should not allow ourselves to be pressed into following the corrupt customs and godly principles or evil plans of action promoted by the worldly men. And the blessed man, according to Psalms 1.1, resists being conformed to the pattern of the world. The Bible says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. You see where he walks? Not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of scornful. No, he doesn't stand there. He's not conformed to those patterns. Just as a boat in the water, but not of the water. You get the point here? A boat is always uh, in the water, yeah, but is not uh, a part of the water. Can you say this boat is part of the water? No. The Christian is in the world, but not of the world. Followers of Christ's pattern, uh, their lives after their Lord, you should look like your Lord. First Peter 2.21, it basically tells us all that. It explains to us, and it says, For even... Hereunto were you called because Christ has also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow his steps. You're seeing, brethren, not according to the principles of the world, which the Bible says is controlled by the devil, the God of this world, 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, the God of this world is trying to control everything. See what the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 4, 4. In whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, which is the image of God, should shine unto them. We should not be controlled by the God of this world, the small g God. And the reference to world is not the physical world, but rather the ion or ion or age. This age this modern age that you're living in is fully controlled by Satan. You should not be controlled by Satan also. And the Bible says that Christians are delivered from this present evil age. Galatians 1.4, it says, Who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil world, according to the will of God and our Father? Are you delivered? Or are you still living like the world? You see the point? This world which Satan oversees and which is marked by idolatry and fleshly lust and rebellion, you should stay away from behaving like that. And the believer lives by the powers of the age to come, not by the powers of this age. Even while residing in this world, look at the book of Hebrews 6.5. It says, And have tested the good word of God and the powers of the world to come. You see what's controlling you? 
is the world to come. You're not being controlled by this world. This world is, is ending. This world is done. This world is evil. This world is controlled by Satan. And the key to escaping the world's grip of uh, conformity is the metamorphosis, which is basically being rendered and transformed in a different way, in a Christian mind, in the way of God. Be transformed into the image of Christ. Be different. Romans 12 verse 2 tells us, and be not conformed to the patterns of this world. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. How do you renew your mind? It is by basically just thinking, oh, I'm not the same way you thought about me. I'm a different person. It's just like, uh, for example, if, uh, le- 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 let me give you a good example. If you lived all your life, uh, you know, in misery, in problems, in issues, and, uh, you know, you are poor, you lived a dirty, lost life, and all of a sudden somebody tells you, hey, do you know that the deputy president is your father hmm something changes immediately you're like you mean i've been suffering i've been going through all this but by the deputy president is my father oh no i'm not going to be poor anymore no nobody's going to arrest me just haywire and put me in jail and all those kind of things no i'm a child of the deputy president i i'm a different person i'm not the person that you knew hey guys friends you have to know me. I'm a different person now. I'm not the old, dirty fella you saw on the streets suffering and having nothing. I'm a different person. And all of a sudden, you are transformed by the renewing of your mind. And the way you used to behave, the way you used to think, the way you used to do your things immediately changes. And now you want to behave like a royalty. You want to behave like a child of a very important person. And you, when people are telling you, hey, let, let's go and uh, do some shoddy, shoddy things to make money, you're like, oh, come on, do I need to do all those shoddy things to make money? Come on, my, my dad does almost everything. Are you seeing the point here? So that's really, really, really important to understand these facts that we need to transform our minds. We change ourselves and we start thinking differently. We don't just live like the way we used to do before. No. Change yourself. Transform yourself. Be a different person. Alright? And that's exactly what Christianity is all about. You transform yourself. Be, don't be conformed to the patterns of this world. But be ye transformed. That you may prove what that is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Hallelujah. <laughs> All right. This is accomplished through God's gift of the Holy Spirit who is working to change believers' hearts and minds from within so that their obedience to God might be natural and immediate. You see, many people just go to the book of Philippians and they read, uh, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. And then you say, oh, I should be working out. I should be doing this. I... Come on, but you don't read the next verse which says that for it is God who works in you. You see, it's, it's like you have a new software inside you and all that God is asking is that just relax your arms, relax your legs. I want to move you up and down. I want to work inside you. But you don't want that. You want to become so stiff. I want to be so stiff. I want to work out my salvation my own way. No, But God is saying, relax, my friend. It is me who is working inside you. So if you're stiff, you will walk in the flesh. But if you relax, you will walk in the spirit. The spirit of God inside you will be working in you. My brothers and sisters, are you getting the point here? Let's also check uh, the book of Romans 7, 6. It says, but now we are delivered from the law that being dead wherein we were held that we should serve in newness of spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. Oh, are you seeing this one? Now you, don't you know that you are dead but now we are new? We are new in Christ? Basically, <laughs> not, not even being new. It is Christ who lives in you. The old you is dead. It's dead and gone. <laughs> All right? 
Let me also show you uh, Romans. Romans 8, 5. It says, For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So where do you want to, to stand? Do you want to be carnally minded? Do you want to be spiritually minded? You can read many, many, many verses. Uh, go to Jeremiah 31, 31 to 34, Second uh, Corinthians 3, 6 to 7, Ephesians 4, 22 to... Let me, let me read you Second Corinthians 3, 6 to 7. It says, Who also has made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter killeth, but the Spirit gives life. You, you know what is letter? Letter is the law. So if you want to follow the law, then my friend, you're going to die. The law kills. And you're no longer under the law because Christ is the end of the law. So if you're trying to do not steal so that you go to heaven, do not kill so that you go to heaven. Oh, I did not lie yesterday, so I think I'm going to heaven. Oh, I lied today, I think I'm going to hell. Uh, no, no, that's not how things run. We don't go to heaven because we did not steal. We don't go to heaven because we did not kill. I'm not saying that people should steal or kill or do bad things. No. But we go to heaven based on what Jesus did for us. Jesus died for our sins. Jesus laid it all for us. He gave his own life for us. So that we may not perish, but we may have everlasting life. All right? So we go based on uh, what he did at the cross, not based on what we do. Because if, uh, if, if, if I stop lying to people... If I stop stealing, if I stop fornicating, I stop. I'm not saying all these things you should do. No, because we are already transformed. We should live, try and do as as much as we can to be into the image of Christ. But if all those doing good things gave me salvation, then Christ died for nothing. Why did Jesus have to die if I can stop lying, stop stealing, stop sinning, stop all those kind of things, and then I go to heaven by my own works? Getting the point here? Ephesians uh, 4, 24 it says that you puff off concerning the former conversation of the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man, which is after which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Mm-hmm. Make some sense? All right. So that's that's how you that's how you conform to the patterns of heaven and don't conform to the patterns of this world. That's how you transform yourself, you renew your mind. That's how you change and you know, oh, I'm no longer the old kid that people knew. I'm no longer the old person that you knew. I'm no longer the old lost man that people knew. I'm a different person. I'm a really different person. I'm a child of God. Friends, be transformed. Be transformed. And that's the end of our today's Bible study lesson. Hope it was a blessing to you. Hope you did learn something. And remember, you can always download this podcast to listen later offline or to share to your friends and family. And please don't forget to favorite our podcast and uh, subscribe to our channel so that you can always be notified whenever we post a new Bible study question. And if you'd like to get saved or you're saved and you just need to get some step-by-step Bible verses on the order of salvation so that you can well preach to your friends or family. Or maybe you just feel led to support our ministry or buy some cool Christian merchandise. Kindly visit our website, keithmwoki.com, for more details and breakdown. Otherwise, I hope to see you soon in the next one.